mistakes. They do happen. I'm pretty familiar with mistakes and today I'm gonna talk about 10 mistakes that I made building this hydroponic Dutch bucket system so you don't make the same mistakes. So let's go. Now the first mistake I made was I planted this like a month too late. I mean not too late, it can never be too late but uh, the thing is they didn't really have time to really develop and uh, create more tomatoes and cucumbers as you can see in the background here. But uh, I mean it still works of course but uh, I could definitely have gotten more if I planted them earlier. So I planted these in, I think, the middle of June. Next time I'm gonna plant in the middle of May instead. Because uh, I was really scared that they would just like freeze to death or something. Well, I mean, of course it can happen. It depends on where you live. And you you probably maybe live in a warmer climate, so you will, it will be fine for you. But I was so scared because I, I tried to keep it over 10 degrees Celsius, but actually, I think that you could have done it at like 5 degrees Celsius. So when the night temperature was above 5, it would be fine. So that's the first thing. Now the second mistake I made was I think I should have used more normal varieties, honestly. I mean, of course, you want to, to play around with different varieties. I mean, I can show you some more interesting ones. But honestly, they didn't really produce as much as just a normal standard cherry red tomato. So next year, I'm probably gonna plant more standard ones. But I still think that you should try, because it's very fun. So let me show you some interesting varieties. One of our favorites is this one. It's a orange one. It's so good. It may be a... Damn, why is my hand so bright? It's really sweet. It might be a sun gold or something. I don't know. I have no idea, honestly. We got it from a friend, so... The thing is, in the beginning, they are just really, really small. And they just look weird and have some kind of weird coating on top of it. I don't know. I'm maybe gonna grow it next year, but I don't know. Now this... Look. It's broken. It's a beef tomato, but they're just not as good, honestly. I mean, maybe if they have a lot of time to ripen, it may be good. But also, it just, you don't want it to crack, really. This, we have a San Marzano. I haven't tasted it, actually. I should do this. But it just took very, very long time before we got anything. So, that's another thing. But this is grown on the fields in Italy, where they have a lot of sun. So... I think that this just needs more time and sun to ripen and become tasty. Because honestly, when you have tried some different varieties, it's just nicer to have that normal standard that you can get a lot of. And we have some here as well. Like just standard cherry. These are good. Not as sweet as the orange one, but still pretty good. And also, these are grown from some store-bought seeds and some seed packets and from friends. But next year I'm gonna buy F1 hybrids, I think. There's one called Sakura, which is cherry in Japanese. I think I'm gonna grow that one, because that's a standard and you know exactly what you're getting. Because it's like a commercial type. Now the third mistake I made was that I cut the top of the plants too early. I, I topped them, I guess it's called. I did this to the cucumbers here in the back, because the thing is, it was very cold for like a week, like a month ago. So I just got really scared and just cut off the stems to make the tomatoes and cucumbers already there ripen faster. But now it's hot. Like the weather is pretty nice right now and it's September. So I guess we've, we've had a pretty cold spring and a pretty hot fall. So maybe that has something to do with it. And that's also why I planted them pretty late. But next time I'm gonna top them later. Because I don't feel like they have uh, ripened faster now. So just think about that. Now the fourth thing I should have done was to wash my clay pebbles. Because I'm growing this in Lekka pebbles, clay pebbles, whatever you want to call it. And they were pretty dirty when I bought them. So I should have washed them. Because now I have got a lot of just clay dust particles in everything. And another thing. I bought four bags with 40 liters, which is 120 liters. And this is just 10 buckets with 10 liters each. And it didn't even fill all of them to the top. So it was not 120 liters. I mean, they probably have gotten like crushed a little bit, but still, I don't like that. So think about that. I mean, don't buy more than you need, but you may have to buy more because they get crushed. I guess. Or they're just scamming us. Now, number five. You know, inside of the Dutch bucket, you want to have an, an elbow pipe inside and outside to the PVC pipe, which I didn't have. So, there was pretty easy to become a blockage, I guess. 
But honestly, that only happened like two times. No, it, it only happened one time actually. But also, I put like some uh, steel wire there to try to make sure that the clay pebbles didn't go inside the pipe, because that would have blocked. But when that one time when it's blocked, it was pretty annoying, because it just it just made weird sounds, and then all the clay pebbles just dumped out of the buckets. So maybe you should have those elbows there. But I couldn't. I, I mean, I couldn't find anything for some reason. So I just bought some taps, which is, they're much more expensive. So that was not very nice. But if you can find elbows, you should. Now, problem number six was that I should have had a larger tank in the beginning. I have back here a box. I think it's like 40 liters or something. When it's the hottest period, it, I have to fill it up with 10 liters every day or more. So that is pretty annoying. So you should get a bigger reservoir. But my plan next year is I'm gonna have a tank outside of the greenhouse or something. And then when the reservoir is empty, I'm gonna just fill it up. Maybe I could have one of these float valves. So that's something I'm gonna do better next time. Number seven, the hole that I dug to put the reservoir, the box into, it became flooded. I woke up one morning, I went inside here and then it just was floating because there was too little water in it so it had been raining a lot and water came from the sides of the greenhouse which filled it up and then it just wouldn't work properly so what i did was i filled it with water again i put a bucket of sand on top of the box and i also had a small pump to pump most of the water out so that's one thing you should pay attention to now the eighth thing what how do you say eighth eighth oh well, the next thing the feeder pipes that go from the main pipe, the 13 millimeter pipe, to each and every bucket. They had fallen out a few times, which emptied my whole reservoir and was very annoying, which made also the pump run dry, so it was just bad overall. So make sure to have something that, to like put them really in the buckets, or you can have longer feeder pipes to just make sure that they go the right way. Now the ninth thing, hydroponic nutrients are expensive, bro. They're really expensive, I don't know why. You're paying for water, basically. You might think that just a few milliliters can do so much, but in reality, there's not many grams of nutrients in every bottle. So, I encourage you to just do some research and try to find some hydroponic nutrients in pulver form, because that's so much cheaper. I did that, but I couldn't really find anything that was cheaper. So, this year I'm gonna try with some store-bought, just normal tomato fertilizer. So it's just one, uh, one solution, but I think it will probably be fine. I'm gonna update you on that, but we're gonna see. And that's so much cheaper. You're still gonna use a lot, but it's, it's definitely better. Just to make sure to measure the EC, the electrical conductivity, to make sure that the nutrient balance is right. I also looked at some commercial fertilizer from a Swedish company, a very big company, that like the real farmers use, but they only come in 25 kilogram bags. So am I gonna go around with two 25 kilogram bags that cost like $200 and I'm probably go not gonna use it up very fast. If you can buy Master Blend, if you're in the US, you should buy that because that's, I've heard that it's very good and it's much cheaper than buying. I, I've bought some Terra Aquatica, the general hydroponics brand and it works, but it's, I have bought a lot of bottles now. It adds up quite fast. Now the last thing, I should have bought a bigger pump, honestly. The thing is, it still works good, but if I want to expand the system, I have to buy a bigger one. The one I have is 750 liters an hour, and they probably get like 500 because of the, you know, it has to pump up to the buckets first, and it works, but I want to have a bigger one next time, which is fine for me, I like pumps. I don't know why, I just like pumps and irrigation and uh, just water things in general. I don't know, it's just so nice to work with. So I'm probably gonna find a use for the one I have in the scenario that I buy another one. I'm probably gonna build another hydroponic system, an NFT system I think anyway. So it will be fine. So that was everything for this video. I hope you liked the video. I, I still encourage you to build one of these, it's very fun. So subscribe to see more and comment your gardening mistakes so we all can learn from it. Goodbye.